uh, it's clear. Um, it looks like an evacuation. No, that's that's not quite right. It looks like they were chased out. It's like if it was just a casualty, and he like points to the the corpse there um, uh, that got like trampled in an evacuation. There likely wouldn't be blood spatter on the wall, so I don't think that person got trampled. At, at least not while they were alive. A stake in the game. Well, who who would be looking for for this probe? Who would know it exists? The person who's trying to hide it. Uh, you run over to your sister. You can see she's been shot with a carbine um, and stabbed once. Um, Lamara also joins you. Malik um, Malik absolutely has Lamara's hand. You don't have to help her. Malik, I am a medical professional. And she's the one that stabbed you to death. You don't know that. I know that for a fact. Her. She goes, but Malik, what if she dies? Then there's a dozen more of her. Malik, please. I know what they have said and what this might be, but it doesn't change the fact that she's still my sister and she's dying in front of me. I lost her once. I forgave him. I will not forgive you. Uh, Alia turns to Samina and goes, I don't know what you are. I don't know how all this came to be, but know this. What I did today is whatever lingering feelings I have had for us and our relationships that I still grasp to. But to me, they are my family. And I promise you, if anything were to happen to them, I will not get in their way. I have a plan. Can you see the probe? No, no confirmation. We don't okay. even know if it is on this floor. We just, great. there's six people here and they are armed. I have a terrible idea. Sit tight. He looks over to, to Alia and, and Lamar and says, okay, uh, 19th floor, I'll catch up with you. Where's Malik? Uh, he took a detour, said to meet you here. He'll be... He, he took off on his own. I had no option to stop him. Okay. I think he got <laughs> off on the 18th floor. Tamir, what's your brother doing? I, I don't know. He didn't tell me. He's really good at that. Yeah, we probably So what are we supposed him. to just wait until something happens? We do have the bomb. There's a bomb? Give it to Malik. Well, now I know what he's doing. So we cause a distraction and let him do what he's going to do. What if he blows up the actual thing that we're supposed to find? Hang on. Malik. A little busy. Yeah, that's great. Hey, do you know where the, the probe is? Uh, I got, my hands are kind of full. Uh, can I let you know in a second? Okay. Is, are we just waiting for your signal? Or like, what What do you want us to do? Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll see it. The arm goes off. You watch as the four bodies, the floor, tables, chairs, anything that was in this room comes tumbling down and splashes into all of these pools. The explosion does excessive damage to all of them. The only one of them that survives is Kasha, uh, but she floats face down in this pool of water. Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for another episode of the final season of Void. Uh, as always, if you like what we do here and you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is over on our Patreon. Link for that down below. While you're down there, click on that Discord link. Join us in the Discord. Be a part of the community. Be a part of the conversation. And as always, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the corruption bar. That bar serves two purposes. One is when that bar uh, gets filled, Doc gets to do the hell she wants to us. And two, every single dollar that goes into that bar goes back to these wonderful, amazing faces that you see here before you. Uh, with that, that's it. That's all I got. I'll turn things over to Dot. Dot. Take us into space. Hi, friends. I was looking for my sticky note. But, oh, wait, wait, wait. Because I think... Okay. Yes. All right. Last week led to a lot of new darkness points. Hmm. Uh, I'm sitting on ten. No, nine, in fact. Nine darkness points. Um... Uh, due to uh, a lot of uh, difficult roles made by the party as they infiltrated an abandoned tower. They finally got to use the crawler. They uh, <laughs> literally drove up the side of this temple, uh, found some of the Nazarene agents, uh, these martyrs, 
uh, that were here to recover exactly what they were here well to recover. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't find it before Malik uh, took the floor out from underneath them. And the party now stands on the precipice of this crumbling floor that overlooks a destroyed uh, bathhouse. And it is Tamir that points up at the chandelier, I believe a critical success was rolled, um, and points out the probe. Um, oh my gosh, what are we signaling things? It was I a know five what, critical success. It, oh, that's right. It was a five critical success, not just any. Yeah, it was, um, it was great. Tamir gets the bright idea of like what is possibly happening. Or where could they possibly have hid this? Because the agents did not find it in this room. And it, of course, is hidden in the chandelier that now hangs from the ceiling <clears throat> of this chamber above what is a 40-foot drop to the floor below since Malik took the floor out. Um, I believe Tao landed a punch? Was that I mean, I was, I was going for it. Was, it. it was a narrative punch. Perfect. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a real punch now. I feel like I feel like if ever in the future Eris meets you, that actually will become a physical punch against you. Like just be like, you dick. Oh, we have. He actually he, it was it was very sweet at the end of the uh the sleepover that we both attended. Uh he found all of the red gummy bears and brought them to me in a bag. Aww. Just the red ones. That was a secret. Not anymore. Ruined it. <laughs> um, a- asshole, Mike's, asshole Mike's is cuteness in the brand. is showing. Asshole's in the brand. It's baked into the brand. That's um, why everyone accepts it. So Look, knowing I'm just here that, to ruin your life, Mike. <laughs> fucking clearly. Tamir points this thing out so you all see it. Kasha floats face down in the pool below you. And Tal, do you want to land a punch? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have you roll a melee combat attack. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I I see Malik and uh, yeah. What is what tab? Did I close it? Oh no, no, it's over here. Uh, just kidding. I know where my character sheet is. <laughs> Melee combat. A limited success. <laughs> okay, one success is all you need. Um, but how much armor are you wearing? Uh, I, that depends on you, Dot. Um, I had originally say- given my armor to, um, Lamara in, like, season one. Uh, but right. after we exploded and got rebuilt into... And you're landing a face hit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no armor on the face. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, there is a, there is a, a, a bit of damage, uh, that you take as Tau lands a really really hard punch. Uh, you can take some trauma if you're feeling saucy about it. I'll take a, I'll take a point. It's not like we... Take a point, yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe bust your nose or your lip and we see a little bit of blood spatter across the wall. And um, I say you need to tell someone the plan. I, wh- you're welcome? You need to tell someone the plan. It's one (laughs) thing to have a plan where you only do it and you're the only one at risk, but what if we had run into that room? Why are you... Listen, okay. He gave me a bomb. He said there are six people on this floor. And I said, don't worry, I have an idea. And he said, okay. He knew what I was doing. Uh, That does not sound like a plan or... That's not a plan. Well, then, you, in that case, I didn't have a plan, and therefore I didn't need to tell you the plan I didn't have. Also, you're welcome. Great. Thanks. Good time. During this uh, punch and uh, uh, conversation, we'll call it, uh, Tamir has been rather quiet. If you were in Tamir's head, uh, you would probably hear. Tamir? It's Aurora. You have a problem. I'm not feeling so good. Uh. And a static rings out across Tamir's head. Uh, 
as Malik uh, says those humbling words, um, your brother's eyes roll into the back of his head and he drops to the ground. Unless somebody attempts to catch him. Uh, was I'll, anybody? Yeah, here? I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I would also. Um, basically, it's just a kind of a it's a reflex based roll, so uh, you can roll a dexterity or an agility. Nope, nope, <laughs> I nope, nope. I'm gonna try to just, just, just. okay. Ah! Oh, oh. You all, you all reach for him to no success. Yes. Uh, it's almost a surprise as his body thuds to the ground. Um, the eyes still roll back into the back of his head. Um, Lamar is there. Uh, you know what? Lamar is there. Uh, she runs over. I don't think she's going to be able to catch him. Um, and she probably doesn't even try, but she does run over and she will, she checks him. Uh, you watch, she kind of like, uh, if he doesn't already have his helmet off, she opens it up or takes the helmet off. Okay. Um, and she, she immediately says, I, I, I don't know what's going on. He, he has a pulse. He seems to be breathing, but I, um, it's like he had a seizure or something. I, I can't do anything with him here. What do you mean or something? I, I'm not entirely sure. It, it seems he's passed out in some way. He's unresponsive nonetheless. And she kind of, you know, pats his face. And snaps and says, uh, Tamir, Tamir. Uh, she checks his eyes and they're still like rolled back to the whites. Da, not to be insensitive to my, my little brother here. Did he tell us where the probe was? Because I know he was the one that saw it in the last episode. Yes, he pointed it out to you. Okay, cool. Oh. I think at that point, I think Alia just will lift him up and basically like cradle him. And kind of looks at... Uh, at, uh, at Sorry, no, I was at, at Tal and he goes, oh, Captain, if, if, if it's okay, perhaps I can take him back to the ship while you two can deal with this. I think we're good in, do we have any more? Do we know if there's any more in here? I thought we, did we grab all of them? Grab all and of what? On the, the, the people that were here with the bomb that we know of? Yes, the they're, all, they're all dead. Except yeah, they're all, all dead. Or incapacitated okay. to an, 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 a very extensive degree. So you seem, from what you can tell, to be alone. Because remember, the rest of this tower seems evacuated or empty already. Okay, so okay. I, I turn to Malik and I say, okay, big brain, how the hell do we get that down? I don't know, shoot it. It's a chandelier. It's going to fall into the pool below and break. I don't know. I don't have a bomb for that one. Not everything can be fixed with bombs. Well, then why are you asking me? I hack things and blow things up. That's pretty much the extent of it. Okay. Well, no blowing things up until I know what they are first. Okay? Because now I have to figure out how to get that thing down without breaking it. It is the very injured or somewhat injured uh uh what is her name my brain just died oh, uh amira amira who's standing there and she says i i can get it but i yes i should ask permission no you gotta tell the plan first. even knows i'm just what are you gonna do to get it she peels back a like a, a vest layer she's wearing it's almost velcroed and she boops a button and you see she's wearing a suit underneath. Um, much like the spider suit that was what's given to. Yeah. All she right, says, go for it. Um, like she says, well, here, hold this. And she like unloads all her weapons, like all the things kind of off of her hips, you know, and drops into the floor. She says, oh, I hate this. Uh, and she jumps kind of back and out the open doorway that drops below and sticks her hands to the wall above uh, and begins to like pull herself up and over and you can kind of hear the suit uh working as uh she releases i imagine it's kind of like that uh mission impossible like gloves mm. right the that you have you know this way that way um and you can hear it as she like 
up, up the wall and she climbs. So she's upside down on the ceiling uh, above and she's uh, just next to the chandelier. Um, does, are y'all just going to let her do the thing? Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't have any way of helping her. Um, hey, um, she, how, how crazy does she want? Hi, with this little amount of crazy, just no crazy, nothing, just. All right, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna roll and see how she does, and then I'll tell you Negative what crazy. she to do. Two. Oh, I got a two, a limited, okay, two. Uh, great, a limited success. Ignore the really, really bad failure. <laughs> uh, we'll pretend that roll didn't happen. Um, she uh, looks at all of you upside down on the ceiling and gives kind of a, a cheeky smile. Uh, and uh, she backs up along the ceiling to put some distance between her and the chandelier. Uh, and she releases her hands to just her feet, so she's standing entirely upside down. And she gets a running start. And she jumps and releases from the ceiling and does kind of an aerial flip and hits the chandelier and swings it forward. Uh, it comes at a very fast pace towards the entryway of the door. It seems that she's going to crash it onto uh, solid ground. Uh, all of you need to make a dexterity check to avoid being hit by a chandelier. Cool. Cool. Uh, wh wh which which check is a dexterity? Yes, uh, correct. Okay. Or or you can choose to roll a force check and stand there and catch it. Well, I ain't moving anywhere, so I'm gonna try to do the force check. Mm -hmm. It was the same. For me, so. <laughs> okay, so the good news is, uh, yes, yeah, so you got this. The good news is, uh, it comes just as she planned, kind of rips free of the ceiling below that has been kind of destructured by the explosion. And the chain swings down and heads straight for the entryway. Uh, Malik manages to kind of move to the side, but it looks like Tal is inevitably going to be uh, like pummeled by this uh, as she kind of rides it down. Uh, but our dear Alia steps right in the way and catches the chandelier with her bare hands um, as it kind of swings into the space, so there is no crashing, and it does not, in fact, break. Um, she proudly climbs off, putting her feet on the ground near the, the precipice. Oh. Told you. Perhaps Good a job. Bit more careful next time. Um, uh, is, I had to get it to solid ground. Had I crawled on top of it, it was going to release to the floors below. Uh, and Tiles then she cut terribly. all over her yes. face. Because <laughs> next time, no, I just realized I probably will, oh, sorry, sorry. walk out. <laughs> I just realized I probably would have had to drop Tamir because I was originally holding him. So it would have been like a whoop, like a kind of a hopefully landing him in a very. It's okay. We couldn't catch him way. to begin with. So. I imagine that if nothing else, Lamar has moved him to the side. Yeah, you probably okay. dropped him, you know, and then like caught the chandelier. Um, Malik, Amira... definitely, Malik definitely mumbles under his breath as he is getting out of the way or, or watching Tal move out of the way. Uh, um, I don't think knowing the plan really helped on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aris. She takes out, a, she ta grabs the Dura back. knife that she like took off of her belt and slices through the chain that's still kind of connected into the room and has ripped the ceiling. Uh, so it comes free and Alia, you're able to kind of set it down to the ground and you can see in this multi-tiered chandelier, the probe, which is about the size of a basketball as we would know it, has been fixated into the center part of this to, to shield it as if to hide it in some way. Uh, it has been welded in here. Oh. Hmm. Would, would a Dura steel sword be able to cut through any of that? Uh, possibly, but this seems like a, a much more delicate touch, as if, uh, like, the wrong cut could destroy mm. the probe, right? So, um, a torch of some kind, some mechanics tools would probably do it. Um, of course, Tamir uh, is unavailable, but his tools are with him. I was going to say, are, are his tools with I, him? I, I was going to say, Tal has welding experience. There you uh, go. And, 
probably has done something similar to this quite a few times on our ship. Yeah, patching something or, or, or removing something. So um, if you don't have the tools, I imagine Tamir definitely does. Um, Tal, you can search his belt for like a small hand torch or something like that to like heat the metal. Yeah. Um, but you will need to make uh, a tech... No- mm. Technology roll? Yeah. Technology roll. Yeah, we'll take tech here. <laughs> it's not really science to, to do this. A limited success. Hey, yeah. Um, whoever welded it in was uh, very much a pro and did a very good job of making this look like an original part of this kind of pewter-colored chandelier. Um, and it takes you a minute to find uh, like the right spots to heat and weaken. Uh, but Tal does uh, an okay job uh, with no damage to the probe. Um, it takes a little effort to kind of like break it free, and you can't really do it without breaking the chandelier, uh, but eventually it does pop out of uh, the probe. Perfect. Yeah. Is it in- small enough that we could just carry it around? Yeah, it like, you know, it's like a basketball. It would like fit under the arm. It is a metal like, chunk of metal, though. It weighs about 20 pounds. Oh. Yeah, I got it. It's fine. Uh, Alia, grab uh, Tamir. Let's. All right. All right. Did anybody get... survive down there? Uh, I don't think so. Has anybody moved? He like glances in the uh, hole. Not, not from what I remember. Um. Well, let's. Uh, you know what? No, no, Dot. Let's not. I can tell you. I know what you're doing, Dot, and I rather you didn't. I'm gonna just see if that's the case, if they recovered. It was no, no, thank you, Dot. Has <laughs> anybody moved? Hold on. <laughs> this I'm answer's taking far too long. <laughs> no, Dot. No one moved, Dot. Um, how do I want to do this? I think I'm just gonna roll a flat. She's still going, guys. I'm gonna roll a flat. Okay. Um, I then... World 20, why are you the way you are? What? I can't get to the character sheet now! Okay, fine, I'll roll it off a different one. Um, doesn't help. No, it's being good. I have too many windows open. Uh, do you want me to roll for Kasha? Oh, it's... Aha! Okay. Or if that's Let's try again. I, yeah, it, the character sheet was, like, stuck, so every time I moved my mouse, it kept sizing the window down and up. I was like, no, no, I want to click a button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, I got you now. I'm good. Um, okay. She is going to roll to see if she goes unnoticed. Okay. Um, did it roll? Okay. Um, I will give you all a observation check. I don't think I'm very observant, but I can try. I'm going to give you a dot in this point. Okay. Actually, no, I'm not. Okay. I just got cut up with glass. Yeah, it makes sense. And you just almost got pummeled by a flying chandelier, so. Yeah. Um, Alia and Malik, you do notice that the floating body of Kasha is missing. You did not see her leave. One, two, three, four, five, Sh- shit. I don't think I would know, right? Actually, I, would, I wouldn't know. You would just know that, that the body that was down there is missing. Uh, there, there was six, guys. Are you sure it's not under the rubble? Uh, I think there was one floating right there, and they're not floating. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So now we have another person somewhere around here. I mean, to be fair, they did get exploded and fell, I don't know, 20 ish feet and got hit with rubble. So maybe they're doing real bad. Yeah. Let's just hope so. Well, um, I, I kind of look around, and say, uh, we should probably find them then because if they're doing real bad they probably haven't gotten very far uh perhaps i should uh maybe you guys can do that and i can take our 
medical patients now back to the ship. I'm sorry, find them in what? Tie off loose ends, I suppose. Not me. Wow. Just what I hear, usually. Seems like, uh, whatever, let's go. Let's just get back. <laughs> They're, you know what? Really, I just hope they haven't taken my crawler. I continue. The... Uh, Alia yeah. scoops Tamir up. Yeah. Roll me just a force check for like a, uh, to make sure uh, you'll be able to pick him up. But the question is, can you maintain the walk back to? Mm-hmm. Because he also shut the well, elevators down. Well, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Limited success. You begin to get tired near the end and you have to take the stairs because the elevators are out of order. Uh, and there's a lot of huffing as you lug Tamir in his spacesuit down a flight of stairs, actually three, four, four flights of stairs, if I remember correctly, back down to the loading bay. Um, when you arrive, hmm, hmm. Okay. Um, you can see that uh, the there. you do not see signs of anybody here that anybody hasn't made it before you. There's no signs that the vessel that they rode in on, the Nazarene agents rode in on, still sitting there. Uh, your crawler still sitting there. Uh, part of you coming up here was also to get parts for your ship. Oh, yeah. So. so uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to take the Nazarene ship. Because the crawler was useful getting here, but the Nazarene ship both has the fuel and the parts that we'll need to get off the ground here in my ship. Uh, so we're going to take the ship. Uh, somebody could take the crawler. Y'all could split up, I guess, if you wanted to get the crawler back. Uh, I actually have a remote terminal and I can control the controller, the, the control the crawler from my tabular. Nice. Okay, great. Perfect. Uh, uh, okay. We should make sure that there's no one in the crawler. And All right, who goes, in, who goes and peeks? Yeah, who uh, goes to peek? I'll, I'll go. Okay, you know what? Uh, uh, Amira will accept the other, right? She goes, because the, the two guys are three guys that she got rid of on the ship to begin with. Uh, she finally lugs their bodies out, dumps them. Um, and gives you the thumbs up that it's clear. Okay. So everybody go ahead and get in the ship. We're going to take that ship back. Okay. You load up. I imagine you have to strap Tamir's body into a seat. Um, there are only four seats on this plus the driver's seat. So is there still one for everybody? No, somebody has to stand. Um... Who wants to stand? Uh, I think it's a unanimous decision at this point. <laughs> I was gonna say Malik stands because he's Malik. controlling the uh, he's controlling the thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I need a piloting role from Tau. With I don't think you get you're not gonna get a blessing here. You're not gonna get uh, it's just uh, a check here. Yeah, it's just it's gonna be a straight piloting check, and then unless, I need a, yeah. Unless their ship has anything. Uh, well, this is... Okay, so some things here. You're going to recognize this vessel not as a butterfly ship, um, but as a consortium-funded vessel. This is part of, like, a military vessel, um, which means they either stole it or are undercover or working. You're not entirely sure, but they came in under the guise of military. Um, so... This is basically a puddle jumper. Uh, that means that they they came off another ship nearby uh, and kind of came down surface. Um, yeah, corruption bar number one. Um, today is the day. Let's see. Uh, you probably won't get any bonuses. Well, no, these may have the like hover. Uh, so you could take a plus one for the maneuvering of these because they're they're meant to be like surface side. 
uh, flying over cities and stuff. So I'd give you a plus one to it. Okay. And then I need a data gen roll to pilot this thing. One. Nice. Okay, that's all you need. That's a success. Yep. Mike, what? Why? Okay. Well, the good news is nobody failed. The crawler um, flies, Dot. <laughs> yes, it, yeah, basically. Uh, it, uh, it It's almost uh, seamless, the way the crawler, like, comes back down the building. It doesn't make it before the vessel, obviously, or the ship, uh, because it's just faster. Uh, but the crawler arrives uh, almost in tow right behind uh, the ship as Tau lands it successfully. It's a little bit of a bumpy ride. But with the critical success, it doesn't affect the driving of it uh, at all. It takes no damage. It it avoids obstacles. Tal had no idea, but Malik was racing. Uh, it was he was the only one in the race. He was trying. He was trying, and and it does. It kind of like and it like yeah. pulls up with a slide. <laughs> I imagine right as uh, kind of the ship lands, you hear the feet leaves. kind of hit. Yeah, um, and uh, the gangway opens up. You see your ship is sitting there, and so is uh, the Corsair, or a version of the Corsair, uh, mm. exactly where you left. Great. Um, now what? Quick check of the ship, make sure that nobody's gotten on it, uh, and then we'll start repairs and a refuel based on the ship that we got. Uh, you check diagnostics. It doesn't look like anybody has broken in or there has been any uh, seal break since y- y'all's exit. So it seems like you were pre- it was pretty much left alone. Um, Amir says, well, I guess this is where we part. Thanks for your help. <laughs> right. Good luck. You, have, you and I have a lot to talk about the next time we meet. She comes over and pats you on the shoulder. She says, I suspect you'll want to speak to your sister. You might want to wait till you get back to Coriolis for that. Sounds such a mindfuck. God damn it. Ugh. She says, but if it means anything, I share memories and all of that. She really does care for you. And he's trying to do the right thing. I walk up to her and I give her a hug regardless. She takes it a little bit more awkwardly. Uh, uh, but she, she does embrace you as well. Uh, and she, uh, she gestures, uh, the little man that was there with her as part of her crew kind of comes bustling out and gives her a couple hand gestures to signal that the ship is, is ready for takeoff. Um, and she says, I suggest you lie low. The only place left with people on it is going to be, um, the city of, I can't remember. What just happened up here? City of... The city of Foreigners. Oh. Foreigners, that's it. Thank you, Mike. Nope, I got um, you. She says, the only place left with anybody on uh, land side is going to be the city of Foreigners. Other than that, I suggest you get out. That's the plan. It's just a matter of getting out. And uh, the person who knows portals better than anybody else is currently indisposed. So we need to fix that first. Good luck. Thanks. She kind of gives you all a quaint, like, wave uh, as she walks away. Dot, I have a question for you. Uh-huh. Um, you know, mere mere hours ago, uh, I, I believe the quote is, I hacked the balls off that ship. Um, you did. Uh, can I, can I uh, get back in there and, and put a tracker on that ship? So that, like, um, we're, when we, like, I know that's the ship whenever I see that ship. I would let you write a code right yeah, yeah, yeah. now yeah, yeah, to yeah, hack yeah. it. So uh, yeah. you'll need to make another data gen roll, but yep. you are successfully in, so it should be easier. Cool. Uh, and we're on our ship, so I get the computer. Fuck. Yes. Fuck my... Boom, yes. boom, <laughs> boom. Uh, you have added tr- a tracker to this ship specifically. Yeah. Cool. Um. Damn it. Well, there it is. Uh, <laughs> and she... Uh, doesn't wait. Uh, she gets the hell out of Dodge and takes off. I can track that ship now. Great. Uh, you see Tao coming back from a, a closet with a bunch of tools. Uh, 
Yep. Uh, can you hold things while I solder? I can. I know he's like the big smart one, but I can help. Great. Perfect. You can help. Hold the flashlight. Money's got to make a technology roll. You can take a plus one for the help of another. I'll do it. Gosh, please work. <laughs> Hey, a limited hey, success. success is still a success. Um, it takes a while. In fact, uh, you are all going to be at work for a few hours um, as you have to remove parts, lug them across the way from one ship to another, reinstall them. Uh, gas will have to be siphoned or like oil, fuel will have to be siphoned from one to another, which is a very dangerous process. Um, and you have to basically uh, deplenish the battery from one vessel to another. Uh, which is also not a uh, quick process. Uh, but you are successful. Oh, while you do this, uh, let's see. Lamar is going to run some diagnostics on our dear Tamir. Um, let's see if you can do better than a one. Ha-ha! Now that she's back at home, uh, when you're all done, I imagine that, uh, Malik and Tal are covered from head to toe, and maybe even Alia in oil and grease, because maybe Alia lugged stuff. Um, but when you are done, Sally lets you know that the ship is seems to be at about 90% operational function. Um, so things look good, at least, uh, for the, for the ship. And uh, if you go to the medical bay, all of you, you'll find Lamara. Uh, she has him strapped down, so he doesn't go anywhere if we take flight. Um, and has some, like, diagnostics being run, like, around him. Oh, wait. I have things to do. No, I don't. Yeah, I do. She has some diagnostics running. Um, and as you come in, she says, oh, good. We have a lot to talk about. About Tamir? Yes. It's very, very strange what's happening to him. And she spins a few screens around so you can kind of all see it. She says, here it shows his brain functionality is at 100%. That means that he's kind of... Well, he's basically dreaming. His mind is still functioning. But his body is almost entirely shut down as if he had a stroke of some kind or, or a seizure. I can't seem to wake him. Well, fuck. And I have more bad news. Go ahead. She goes over to where he's laying and she lifts his head uh, very gingerly and kind of rolls it to the side to show you the port in the back of Tamir's neck. It looks burned out the way a socket might burn out if there was an electrical malfunction or kind of like a, a spritz of electricity of an explosion. It, it, it blew it. Uh, like a light bulb. Um, you can see it's got burn marks around uh, like the lower half of his skull. Uh, the piece itself seems potentially damaged. Um, and she says, I have a suspected feeling that this has something to do with it. Where the hell did he get this cheap tech from? She says, that's no piece of cheap tech. Well, then how did it burn um, out? I I don't actually know. I've never seen this before. Um, usually implanted technology doesn't really burn out like this. It just gets updated before it's irrelevant. The idea of some kind of electrical malfunction inside of his head is not something that even I'm qualified for. But you said that there's no damage, right? It looks like it is functioning at 100%, you said? Breathing, and she kind of points to oxygen. Uh, his his pulse is normal, though. He does show some signs of, uh, I hate to call it brain trauma, but um, he seems to be in, in a coma-like state. His body is fully functional, but his mind, it seems, uh, lost. And these brain patterns show that he's, he's in REM sleep. At this point, Alia turns to Tal, goes... Well, if 
he's alive. There may be another way we can reach him. You and I together. Yeah, I was going to ask what happens when we meditate? Is it a similar thing? Like, could be, he be having a vision of some sort? It's, it's a possibility. I don't, I don't know. Um, doesn't seem to respond uh, on this side to his name or any kind of, um, well, anything. I even pumped him full of adrenaline thinking it might wake him up and to no success. Uh, Dot. Uh, he, Malik's worked for some uh, sordid people. Uh, can I look at this tech implant and, and see if I might know where it's from? Yeah, it's... Uh, Oy vey, you could roll a... Uh, metacurgy role, a science role, a technology role. Uh, Probably science or technology would be do, better. Do, 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 let's do science. Oh, sorry, let's do technology. Two successes. Okay. Um, she's right when she says it actually doesn't look like cheap technology. Uh, it doesn't. This looks like to be a very, very expensive uh, piece. Uh Implants are not really accepted almost anywhere as, like, civilized things to do. Which means he would have had to get it black market somehow. Um, and you've known your brother a long time, and he... Have, uh, based on the flesh around it, has not had this that long. Hmm. Uh, I, you might say, all right, y'all, when was, when was our one shots? Uh, I, I, got, I got you, I got you, Dot. A month or two months ago, maybe. Hey, hey, Tal. You remember that time I was stranded on a moon? It was very inconvenient for everybody. Yeah. Did, uh. It was a lot quieter. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Did uh, did he go anywhere super shady? Probably on Coriolis. Did he like disappear for any length of time? Yes. Like a suspicious amount of time. Look, your brother is his own person. And uh, he can come and go as he pleases without me asking questions. Yeah. Except so, for, are you okay? And do you need anything? Yeah. The problem is he came and went to a place where he got top dollar black market tech shoved into his head. And he doesn't have top dollar. He works here and you've never paid us. And he was a college student. So I can't imagine he has the hundreds of thousands of credits to afford that. No offense to payroll. I'm just saying, I don't think he can afford that. Look, if you want money, just ask. I don't, I just want to know where he went to get um, this. So if you have any idea I don't know. where he disappeared to. I don't think he's ever really mentioned it and... Right. Considering he's had other implants before, we never questioned it. Yeah. yeah. I have an implant. You don't you just don't talk about it. The difference is when we were put back together, he said that he needed to talk to me about something because someone was looking for something. Very expensive tech attained illegally and shoved into your head is a great thing for someone to be looking for. Yeah. Well, it's also a really good reason for uh, somebody to hold you hostage on your own in a special medical facility as well. Correct. But we didn't ask questions about that then. I don't know why we're starting now. Because none of us knew about it yet. I, I didn't know he had tech in his head. Did you? I knew he had the the mute button. Look, 
I knew that he had tech in his head. I knew that he went away for a couple of days and came back. And that's all he ever told me. My concern is that if the hegemony doctors were looking at him to find this and other people might have been looking for him and now we're famous. Mm -hmm. Whoever's looking for him and it shouldn't be that hard to find him. But and, why uh, now? Why now? I mean, he, he seems to have had this for a few months. Why? Why now? We were blown up for a while. And then in cryo for a while. So. We haven't been awake know. for much time. It seems like a malfunction. But I'm no technician. I don't know where to get that fixed. I mean, perhaps we're looking at it wrong and not, maybe we shouldn't try to fix the tech and hopefully fix your brother. I think that should be, unless I'm getting this wrong and maybe fixing the tech is how we help Tamir, but based on what I understand and what I see here, he's alive and he appears to be in some state of at least functionality brain-wise. Yeah, I, I can't guarantee anything, but if there's a chance that we can communicate with him and find out any information that he himself might have, I cannot say that we'll bring him back, but at least we'll be able to talk to him maybe and learn a little more of what all this is, why this happened now and what we can do next. Yeah, my only concern is like, Lamara, correct me if I'm wrong, but that looks like a neural implant. Um, that's true. So, bad news. She kind of grabs, like, uh, something from the computer and pulls it over, like, a wire that looks like it would fit the plug in the back of Tamir's neck. And she says, so, uh, I thought maybe I'd just plug him in and see what was going on, if it was all still functional. And as she gets close, you see blue electricity jump from the back of his neck over to, it, like, sparks on the, the tip of the outlet and blows it out of her hand across the room. The air, all the lights in the space like flicker, uh, her computers like, uh, as it all comes back and she says, so, um, I think plugging him in's a bad idea. Yeah, no more And you see that. his heart rate like spikes a little bit when it happens. Uh, she says, it seems to give him a jolt every time I try to, you know. Let's, let's, let's not then, no more, no more jolting. Um, yeah, I mean, we could try to meditate and reach him that way, but, like, I, I don't know what you want from me, Malik. I don't know anything. None of us know anything. Your brother's got secrets, just like you. Aha, okay. Uh, let's see. Your brother had, okay. Uh, I'm going to have, hmm, hmm. Not talking seems to be a family trait. I'm going to have everybody roll just a basic wits check. It may be something Tal says that sparks something in your mind. Success. Okay, okay. Oh, hi. It's like a, mem a memory type thing. Uh, Ali, want to roll it too? Um, sure, yeah. What, what was the roll again? Wits. Wits. <laughs> just a straight up wits? Okay. It's a flat wits roll. <laughs> no mind. Okay, doesn't spark anything for Alia. Um, Tao would know when you you say he's your brother. You know he's got his own secrets. Tamir does keep some of the artifacts and the things that he works on, where it with, locked away. There's like a special box, maybe or locker inside of his chamber. Tao would know that. Uh, though Tao's never been snooping, you know he keeps things of great value to him locked away. Mm -hmm. Malik, with your limited success, you actually, um, uh, you know, Tal's right. Uh, Tamir might have his secrets, but you have security footage of everything that takes place on this vessel. That's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> uh, just in case, uh, you know, that seems like the Malik way. Tao, you think, oh, he keeps all of his secrets in a place. Malik goes, oh, shit, I can watch his secrets yep. uh, from security footage. <laughs> um, Poor guy. But that's only what's happened on the ship. 
That is true. It's only what's happened on the vessel. So uh, there is security footage you could go through. Uh, Tal, there is a locker you could attempt to go through. Yeah. Um, Look, I I, I just want to say, you know, illegal tech happens on a, a lot of the larger cities. There may be a specialist, and, and we have all of our friends now, right? That's true. Uh, frankly, and this had to have happened in Coriolis. So it's somebody at Cor- Coriolis, or at least was at Coriolis a few months ago or so. And frankly, uh, getting back to Coriolis is kind of an issue right now. Um, Ollie goes, or uh, uh, Lamar goes, yeah, about that. Um, um, I was kind of listening into the radio while um, you know, all of you were fixing the ship. Great job, by the way. Um, but things have kind of worsened on Coriolis. Great. Um, worsened how? She goes over and kind of clicks uh, the radio <laughs> on. You hear that static come in, and it as she tries to uh, like dial it. And the order continues its dangerous escalation. We have just received word that a large Zelosian fleet has established a blockade in Eyeswalls. Our allies on Saddle and Mira are worried, and the Council is deliberating as we speak. Sanctions against Zelosian colonies and interest are apparently on the table, as well as military response. Zalos is now completely cut off, and the Colonial Agency is trying to negotiate the release of non-Zelosians from the city of foreigners. With backing from the clergy of the Church of the Icons and some of the more prominent Myrian clans, there is still a chance that the portals will reopen for trade and pilgrimage throughout the horizon. Lamara dials it again in turns, uh, tuning in to our dear Charity. Because I have to read something as, as Charity. Why wouldn't I? Um, it's actually a contractual obligation. It's a contract. I have to at least one episode. Charity here. Thank you, Jabal. It is a grim sight, bloody, broken citizens whose only crime was a desire for free trade. Merchants and diplomats who risked their lives to trade with the Order's negotiations in the infamous city of foreigners. Some bear the mark of torture, and we have heard several accounts of violence and spies already. Citizens of the Free Horizon are no longer safe behind the martyr's veil. It tunes again to like another station. Uh, news all over the horizon of the chaos that is rising from place to place. Um, let's see. I'm going to read you another one, but i got to decide which one I want to do. Um, I'm going to spend two darkness points because I have to, to enact this. Hmm. Yet again, someone's trying to take advantage of the consortium's generosity at the helm. After the Homogeny's recent betrayal, the Free League has followed suit and chosen to nullify the favorable contracts drawn up during the formation of Coriolis. Word is coming out of the mon- uh, monopolistic demands made by Stevedore Akbars and harbor masters at several local spaceports and trade stations. Custom fees and labor costs are on the rise. Medical and life insurance are apparently high on the rabble rousers' agenda. With the Free League's blessing, according to the faction spokesperson, the Tsar Kai is debating the issue with the agitated knowledge as the council, uh, at the council as we speak. It seems that strikes have risen across all free trading and docks in the Third Horizon. As she continues to scroll and you listen piece by piece, it seems that a few things have taken place over the last two days. Continual attacks and ongoing conversation of uh, war against Zalos rises. The consortium and the homogeny have teamed up, causing uh, the labor workers, the traders, the docks people to go on strike. Uh, This has caused many problems, including getting people in and out. And it seems that... uh, 
uh, conversations are being had between the upper crust of the Free League to discuss what they're going to do about the current strikes. Travel is going to be difficult, if not at all possible. So, you know, there's that. I think going back to Coriolis may not happen. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, I can look through his um, locker and see if there's anything there. I hate going through people's stuff, though. Um, but we can see that. Uh, oh, uh, Malik, is, yeah. we need to get the data off of this. And I hold up the probe. We need to get the data off, off of this and transmit it as quickly as possible. Can I get you to start working on that? Yeah. Cool. I'll go figure out how to get into his locker. <laughs> Malik leaves ah. with the basketball. <clears throat> Alia, you're left standing in the room with just Lamara and Tamir on this table. Uh, at this point, Lamar, I mean, Alia doesn't really know what else she can do herself. Um, I think she pulls up a chair, kind of just holds Tamir's hand and just starts kind of praying, and kind of talking to him. Um, just being like, okay, you know, we are, you know, basically encouraging, like, you know, you're, we've been through a lot worse. So <laughs> we'll get through this, okay? You and, you and all of us, we're going to make it. All right, this, this is just another, just one more skirmish, one more little fight. It's not a big deal. And I, I don't know uh, if this is possible, but I feel like she herself kind of like in the process of like maybe brushing aside his hair a little bit off his face, starts uh, essentially trying to connect with him and see if, he, if she can get in touch. Okay, as she I will have you then roll a um, mystic power check. Okay. Darkness point. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so a single success. So you pray and you pray and you sit there in silence and Lumara does whatever. Lamara does. Maybe she cleans instruments. She checks his, his vitals again. Um, and after about 30 minutes or 35 minutes, uh, you feel almost like when you reach for a doorknob and static electricity clicks off onto your fingertips. You feel that between your hand and some mirrors. And for a brief moment, you get strange flashes. Uh, of of data and blueprints, the voice of a little girl uh, kind of rings out. Um, but there seems to be great uh, struggle within his mind. This is just a limited success, so you're not able to like directly connect with him. It's almost like you're viewing it uh, from a third perspective, yeah. third like third perspective. But things kind of pass across uh, what you consider your vision uh, as if. It's, you know, Malik is running a data check on something or seeking information off of a massive computer. Mm -hmm. And the little girl's voice uh, seems unclear. You can't quite make out what she says. Um, but you can feel that there is, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of conflict as if uh, his mind does not rest easy, as if he is in some kind of nightmare or terror dream. And then it shocks you, uh, your hand away, almost the same way that the plug did. Uh, and you, you have to kind of pull back. What, what is, what? and I think at that point, oh boy, okay. Is there any amount of that that seems some sort of, of like seems cohesive or, or like, is it just that he's battling something almost like hmm. similar to how like. Roll a empathy. No, yeah, roll an empathy. Let's do, yeah. Uh... There is one manipulation. I would take manipulation because you're trying to read him, if that makes sense. 
or just okay. a flat empathy if you don't have manipulation. But you're have... trying to read his feelings, basically. Okay, so I'll do empathy. Yay! Well, it's still a limited success, but... You can't make anything out visually as you, you kind of try to connect with him, but you can feel a lot deeper. Alia um, has a deep, deep feeling. It is as if Tamir is there, but not in control. As if he too is watching from afar, because remember you connected with him. So maybe he's watching. And it's as if two powers, two, uh, uh, Alia doesn't really know technology. It's as if two entities in his mind are battling for control. Does this sound in any way similar to the situation between the Jinn and Mamara? In, the sense in, of, some, in some points, but this doesn't, you don't get the feeling of a Jin being here. This is more of a, a, maybe what's going on in his mind, but not in his body. He's not a vessel necessarily for a Jin, if that's what you're asking. Okay, because then my next follow-up question then is, because one of my talents is exorcism. Could I somehow use it in a way, essentially in a way to kind of create a barrier between Tamir and, or I, well, first off, either, either expel this other entity that is trying to take control of Tamir's mind or create a barrier so that way it doesn't, it, it is isolated. You can sure try. Um, it's not a proper exorcism because you're not trying to exercise anything from his body because there's not really anything to, to exercise. It's all technology. But uh, I, this is very interesting. Uh, like a, It's like a digital exorcism. So I'm going to let you roll that mystic ability check for the exorcism and see if we can't help or set Tamir up for some success. Come on, baby. Oh, did it click? Hey, okay. A limited. Oh, it click. Okay, it clicked. Okay. Wait, no, that's the, was that the? No, that was that's, it, right? that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, okay. Um, so you get this feeling. It's not the same, but it is kind of the same, uh, right? Uh, there's not a jinn here. You don't know that there's anything to exercise from the body, but a lot of exorcism, you know, is actually about protecting the vessel. Mm -hmm. um, it's, right, the, the person on the inside, because you can get rid of a demon, but if you don't leave anything behind. Um, and when the body is possessed, oftentimes it eats away at the actual person, the soul of who is there. Yeah, and basically, I want to create this some way, some sort of a protection around what the entity that is Tamir, so that he's not in some sort of a power struggle against. Basically, he, that he has a little bit more of an edge over whatever it is that is. Okay, to. I would say that that is in fact the case. That you you get the feeling, and maybe it actually takes a physical manifestation, right? We see Alia draw some symbols around him to create a protective circle, uh, put certain herbs in his hands. Um, and you go through this process and we, we see Alia's hands kind of touch either side of Tamir's temples as you try to protect him. And unbeknownst to Alia in terms of whether or not it's a success, inside of Tamir's mind, it is. It puts a barrier up to keep Tamir safe against whatever battle or struggle is happening between the other two entities that are fighting because when two things fight, they want somebody's got to be last person standing, and you want to assure Tamir is still left. Um, but I guess we'll have to find out about that next week. I need to make myself. <sighs> the rest is on you. I think you just Lamar watches. I was about to say, Lamar watches with great interest. And I kind of relay what I learned in that process. As guys, I kind of tell her, it's like, Tamir's there. He's, well, he, he was struggling against something else in his mind. Something um, is trying to control or take control. And there seems to be just a burst of information that is trying to I can't even explain it properly, but I'm, I'm not. Says, I'm not well, I don't know anything about technology of this kind. Not really. That's not where my study was. But, you know, in psychology, uh, they say some people can hold multiple personalities. And oftentimes uh, there's a dominant 
personality that tries to take root. It's the one that wears itself on the sleeve. Um, sometimes these people often will go into much like the states of coma as the personalities battle for who takes a rock. Well, it's really it's just, the mind is not strong enough to hold more than one personality. Well, neither is the soul. And in this situation, it seems like, well, my hope is, and with what I've done here, at least the Tamir that we know, the one that we see and, and cherish, at least that one is protected, not your. <clears throat> Not, I don't know how long I can hold it. I can, how long this barrier will last. But at least this gives us some time. I don't really have a lot of time anymore. What do you mean? I don't know. I have a really bad feeling, Alia. You and me both. And the camera cuts away from the two of you standing over Tamir to Tao. Tao, um, his room door is easily accessible. You're able to go in. You know this room well, I would think, um, even though I'm, I don't know where the two of you reside on the regular, but it is his room. Uh, and you know that there's like a series of lockers, kind of steel, basic lockers. And one of them is probably the one he keeps his valuable things in stuff artifacts and the whatnot um what is your move here um i'm going to say uh sally captain's orders open this locker <laughs> the locker is not fused to my systems i'm sorry captain i have no control over the locks great uh try to pick it using infiltration mm, i don't have infiltration um, uh, the, that's a basic what is it infiltration a agility check so you could just make an agility roll yeah fuck it why not let's have fun i mean you could uh, you could also choose to just use some heavy machinery and like weld the fucker open or cut you know cut the bolt on it or try to hell you could blast it out Tal's not gonna go that far uh okay <laughs> Because uh, she does realize what her ship can do, she will probably try to pick the lock to see if she can. Okay. And okay. then just an agility check. <laughs> when that fails, she'll get the security uh, footage of him opening up the locker. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, I like that. That's cool. Okay, so let's see if you can if you if you manage to pop the lock by hand. No. <laughs> so oh, he after, has it's it's a very strong lock. Yeah, after after uh fucking with it with a screwdriver for a little while, she uh <laughs> Cal, uh just goes, oh. <sighs> okay, Sally, um show me the footage from the last time this locker was accessed. Gathering footage. Nearby on one of the huds, like on the wall uh appears some of the footage um i am going to need you to roll an observation check to see if you can spot what his combination is okay uh no i'm going to take some liberties here i'm sorry in advance <laughs> um nope. it's very blurry and it's very 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 hard to see it's almost like blocking it from the camera angle mir why do you have to be so wide okay um <laughs> Run it back. Uh, see if you can slow it down. Let me try. <laughs> Reversing. Slowing footage. You can take a plus one because she's running it at slow. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I only have a one in observation for the record. Yeah, but your wits, you got some wits plus a one. You might make it. Hey, hey. there we go. Limited success. It was that last one. It was that last one. You you very slowly watch his hands turn and you try to figure out on the dial exactly what the numbers are. Tal, you're assured it is your birthday. Oh, okay. Uh, I will go ahead and, and put in the, uh, <laughs> I, will, I will put in the combination and open that baby and see what's in there. 
this is an old school lock and you have to watch his hands. This is not some number thing that you press in. You actually, you watch as he uses this kind of ancient uh, locking mechanism, kind of like a deadbolt. And you turn it twice, once back the other way, once the other way, and you put your birthday in. And sure enough, the lock releases uh, into your hand. Good job, Tamir. I was never going to get that on my own. All right. Uh, what's what's in here? What's in t- t- uh, Tamir's secret locker? Um, Ooh. There's a bunch of junk that to you would have no value whatsoever. Maybe it's really important pieces or something like that. Um, sentimental gears. I got sentimental you. stuff. There is um, a strip of fabric. Was that what it was that y'all traded? Malik, or was it a string? When? when you were on the swamp, when you were in the swamps. Uh, it was a string. It was a string. Uh, there's a strange uh, kind of uh, loose leaf string uh, that string. has been kind of taped or pinned and hung to the back. Um, any, I imagine, letter that has ever been written when Tao gifted everybody stuff or things that have been left behind for Tamir uh, is kind of stored here. And in the bottom, there's a bin. Uh, the bin probably was empty, except now it is filled with a single item. The last artifact that you got off Coriolis from Josie, this helmet. Uh, what else is in here? There's a, oh, he destroyed that, so that would not be in here. I don't know if Tamir would keep a journal, and I imagine it'd be digital, not. not if hand-to-hand. Tamir kept a journal, it would be definitely digital. Well, I would assume. Maybe Noam can confirm that. Um, <laughs> gnomes in chat probably stuff from algal red yeah string and like stuff maybe maybe a picture of him and his brother theory. you know um yeah little red string conspiracy theories um there seems to be a lot of like maybe uh hand-drawn or kind of written notes uh around portal stuff that you don't entirely understand it seems way outside of your like scientific this is basically like rocket science on paper Um, It seems he's been doing some more research and things on portals, uh, right? And and, uh, that, but uh, in here are some of the artifacts you've recovered. They're like glowing balls, right? Uh, Maybe he kept one and didn't turn one in. And then this this helmet. I almost forgot we got this helmet. All right. Definitely a bomb. Definitely a bomb, says no. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see the bomb. I'm like, mm, apparently we have a stock. Okay, noted. I pick up the helmet and I uh, I close the uh, I close the uh, the locker. As you pick it up, you and you kind of touch it. You see the interior of the helmet uh, has almost like a liquid metallic nanite that kind of reaches as if you put a head in this, it would kind of consume the head. Um, it, yeah, like reaches, uh, like out, it, 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 uh, reacts to your touch. Well, I would normally ask Tamir what this would do, but we can't ask him yet. (laughs) Maybe Lamar will know. Either way, we're gonna we're gonna see see if this yeah, works. You, you pick it up. Yeah, you pick it up and you're like, you know what? What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Um uh, you didn't destroy the lock or the locker, so you're able to put it back into like the state it was in. Um it, yeah, you because you've been here um probably 30 minutes or so because you jiggled the lock for a while without any success and had to watch the footage back over and over a few times. Um yeah. and as you go to leave his room, this helmet kind of under your arm, uh the camera kind of goes down. Uh, the hallway following till it finds Malik, who has the probe. What is Malik doing? Uh, priorities, man. Uh, my brother has a legal tech in his head. Um, so I am going to uh, multitask because that's what computer nerds do. Uh, I'm <laughs> going to write a script. Um, so uh, this looks like it's only two or three months old. So I'm going to go back to data logs that are two or three months old. Um and okay. uh, see if I can. Uh, it has, and, and it had to be at Coriolis, right? So I'm looking for that time frame plus docked at Coriolis 
plus camera feed with Tamir in it. Um, so as long I, as if the feed meets those three requirements, I want all those folders, all those files put in a folder. Um, and then all right, I'll, let's get a data gen roll for this. Yeah. Kachow. How about that, oh, Dot? Shit. What is the okay. what's in his head, Dot? Just tell me where he went. You he wasted was it on what's Beth. Up? Okay. <laughs> so you're like, uh, screw the probe. Brothers in trouble. Yeah. Uh, and you begin typical running back Assad behavior. through data logs and video footage of what has gone on over the last two months here. It takes you a while. Any kind of data of this is going to take a while. Um, you, based on your original search, don't find much. But what you do find is a series of data logs since really that point in time, about two months ago, where every once in a while... Tamir logs in and runs a strange uh, runs a strange code through the ship. Um, it doesn't happen at any specific intervals, but with a fucking five critical success, mm -hmm. you take those timestamps and run them through footage on the ship. Each and every time you witness a couple things. You witness Tamir talking to himself and then plugging himself into the computer. The most recent time that this happened was just a day ago. Two days ago, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Um, and you watch as he plugs himself in, because I, I think he rolled a critical success on he plugging did. Aurora into Sally. He did. And uh, you watch as your brother like freezes. This time it's very, very different as if he loses control of himself. Uh, and he taps in and the code that runs through this time is very different. Um, it seems that the program, which is the first time you're able to identify it as such, runs through the entirety of Sally and reads Sally's files, tries to collect as much information as possible. Um, but in doing so, anytime one system comes across another system, the systems basically learn from each other. And when your brother was done, it was such a successful like program run uh, that it seems that he not only left with whatever this program was back into his head, but he left with a part of Sally. Interesting. He did not know that. He did not know that. But Sally basically hitched a ride. More than likely, his technology cannot handle two programs at once. Interesting. Uh, Malik frantically is sliding his hand back and forth, back and forth across keys. Um, I would uh, like to, if at all possible, with that five crit. Um, I would like to. Uh, how do I put this? Not. I would like to isolate Sally from the rest of the ship. Like, this whole ship can use her, but I want what I'm about to do to Sally to not affect the rest of the ship, right? Like, okay. put, I put okay. a firewall in my room. Um, and then as soon as I do that, uh, I close the door, uh, and then I say, Sally. Yes. Access to Mir. Access to Mir. I do not understand your command. Do you have a link to Tamir? I am not that kind of program. I do not understand your command. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, never mind. I'll figure it out. The vibe you get is Sally doesn't know. Sally's not a, an intelligent yeah. AI. Um, it, like I said, it probably just hitched a ride. Mm -hmm. That's, that's Sally what I figured. Sally is but the consortium program that runs vessels and connects to like the larger database yeah. which means um probably it was a defense mechanism mm. right it's like anytime a hacker hacks into something and gives full access to another program there are going to be some kind of code that comes to fight back and in this case what it did was attach itself yeah like a virus exactly yeah. which kind of like a virus yeah uh malik's but malik's... sally this computer doesn't know that right Malik's train of thought is like he he has some study in metagurgy and normally you can't share a brain uh but a portion of his brain is a computer and if he can load balance like two CPUs he can take 
the strain off his actual human meat brain uh, and share the computer load. Um, um, but I mean, at a curse five and with your skills, you wouldn't know that kind of work on a computer. Any computer requires you to be directly plugged in. Yeah, that's which right. means you would, his... you might have to find a way to connect to to your brother. Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I was getting. His, his, the, the port isn't working. Um, I will tell you this though. As you continue to try to run this, and maybe, I mean, a five is a lot. You found out a lot of information. The program that he ran through Sally and took back into his, his head is unlike anything you've ever seen. It doesn't use third horizon code, right? Code usually has a lot of identifiers. It has a lot of things um, that, uh, you know, it's like, a, it's like a second hand of the person that creates it, right? There are a lot of identifiers for the program. None of this matches anything that you have seen before. It is a dense program, a highly intelligent program. And the, this program, from what you can tell, is specifically written to hide information. Dot. Yes. I don't want a metagame, so feel free to slap this right off the table. Malik hacked the blue disc from the white the butterfly. The blue disc. You did. Does it match that? It has similarities. Interesting. Like, I mean, the the blue butterfly, like, layout, right, is like a certain set of code, that yeah, data yeah, information. Yeah. And maybe you find a match inside of this sure. larger program, as if this program has some of that information. Yeah, like in some it. of this index. Because uh, like, I know, like, what we found in the white butterfly was vastly different than anything we see yeah. in the disks that we use. Um, and if this is also code I've never seen before, unless it's, like, Yeah, and maybe you're like, wait a second. Yeah. So yeah. uh, when you run them, you get the idea that this program, like by the time you're done and you've run it and it's taken you almost an hour to sift all of this and like piece the puzzle together, you get the idea that your brother is hiding a piece of programming that has First Horizon origins. Fuck. Um, he closes all that and puts it in, you know, safe, safe place. Uh, and then just casually puts the probe on the desk uh, and then like grabs a blanket to like wrap around it so it doesn't roll off. Kind of like you do with the Lamara egg. Yeah, uh, like a little nest, like yeah, an egg. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Way less, way less care taken than he took with, with, uh, with Tamir. Uh, and then he just, like, are there, I assume there's like ports and stuff on it? Uh, there's some way to Yeah, this, this is actually, this, yeah, this probe would be launched into space it would have like an antenna that would come out and it would send out a beacon. Boop, boop. And then when somebody would pick it up, it would be, it would have been their signal. Like if you run it, which basically is what you do, you activate it, you turn it on. And it's not floating in space. It begins letting the signal out. When you read it, it is the message from the order's ship that they were coming in peace to come get refugees to bring back to Zalos. Mm. Um, which, right, it, it was the message. It's the yeah. message like we're, we come in peace that was taken uh, or it. never made it to its original place, which is why they thought the order had shown up to attack them. Uh, um, so and that... you hear the message just on repeat. Okay, cool. So there's no, like, there's nothing, like, super secret about this thing. It's just a message. Mm -hmm. It's speaking. exactly what they said you were coming cool. for, but you seem to have found the item. Yeah, he leaves it there, uh, unplugs it because, you know, weird things. Uh, and then he leaves his room and closes the door. Uh, and he just starts yelling, completely devoid of the fact that we have comms. He's like, Tell! Tell! Emergency meeting! Uh, you imagine, I imagine at this point, Tao has made back to medical. Yeah, I think probably this took a while, but so did what Tao was doing. So Tao probably comes out of the room like right next or, or <laughs> very close by. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's holding this helmet and she's like, what? Why do you have a helmet? It's what I found that I thought might help us. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, great. Um, we, that's, uh, uh, oh, crap. Um, okay, so not to pile shit on top of the shit sandwich that is our job. Uh, that tech in his head is real super secret big news stuff. Uh, it, there's, there's code in there in his head. There's a program. How do I put this? You, uh, there's a program in his head. And the program has some code that is very similar to the code that I hacked off the white butterfly. I think the tech that's in his head is First Horizon. 
I don't know how he got it. I don't know how it got here. I don't know how it got in his head. But if the hegemony was looking into it and they didn't find out what I found, or they would have killed him or taken it out of his head, I don't know, uh, they're probably going to want that. We can't tell the Draconites because they, that's kind of why we like them and they love tech. And that's real. They already like, know. Okay. That was their bargaining chip. That's why. Oh, that would have been useful information t an hour ago. They, they knew he had important tech. They didn't know exactly what. Yeah, they, they, already, they already know he's got something. Okay. That's why we took their offer. Oh, I don't remember that at all. Um, okay, well then if they don't know what it is, we should keep it that way. So yeah. we can't ask them for help. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Maybe this is why he didn't tell us. But why in the first place? Either way, uh, I think if we can find someone smart enough to fix the port in his head, I think I can fix him? Uh, We're told the only remaining open city is the city of foreigners, at least in this area. Yeah, well, I guess we're going to the city of foreigners to see if we can find anybody who will somehow help without going too deep on what they're doing. Uh, yeah, let's I'm, I'm going to take this and see if Lamara knows exactly how to use this. Sure. Oh, I hacked the probe thing. It's just a probe. It just it is what it said. It's just a message. Yeah, we need to forward that information to complete our mission. I think they need the actual probe. It's literally just a message on loop. Same thing over and over again. I think the probe itself yes, is the evidence. Do you have the data of where the probe has been? I, yeah, I could pull that. Okay, because that's what we need. Okay. And he, like, slides his tabula out. and Okay. Done. Okay. Who, where am I sending this to? Uh, I don't remember the... I don't remember uh, the, the Draconites gave you like a, a Dropbox folder. Secret squirrel at Draconite.com. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, and very easily you're able to like ping them through basically private messaging <laughs> to let them know that you have recovered the item. Um, yeah. You imagine that you will be contacted again when they are ready. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Tal never actually stopped walking while she was talking, so I imagine you walked with her because she wasn't stopping. Yeah. Uh, and we probably made it to the uh, the med lab now. Uh, so I I found this helmet, and I know Tamir said something about healing people with it. Uh, Oh, <gasps> Lamara gasped. The whole room is kind of filled now with the smell of burning incense. Uh, you can see that Alia has kind of drawn around the medical table on the floor, uh, creating this uh, this kind of protection. Uh, I don't want to call it a spell, uh, but this kind of mystic protection barrier. Um, and Lamara kind of gasped. She goes, where did you get that? Oh, uh, Tamir won it playing cards. She runs over, and if you'll let her, she takes it right out of your hands as if she's yeah. looking at, like, a, a gold brick, and she says, I've never actually seen one of these. Do you know, when I was in the uh, uh, psych ward, they threatened to use this on me a few times. Uh, they, they use it quite often to erase people's minds. Oh, it has other we functions, don't... though. Okay, I was going to say, we don't want to erase the mind. We would just want to make it better. So if we could make that setting go, that'd be great. She goes, this is this is kind of an artifact. And she kind of spins it around and she's, and kind of shows you in the light. It's almost shiny. And she says, see, this is um, uh, glyphs, uh, depending on, on how it's used and uh, if we can figure it out, uh, it, 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 it could maybe help. It's, um, there's more than one of these out there? Uh, um, I guess. Probably held by really, really important people. The fact we have one is... Kind of an anomaly. I mean, we're kind of important. Well, we are kind of an anomaly, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, apparently Tamir has some extremely uh, secret and rare tech in his head uh, that we definitely can't let anybody know about, which is why he didn't tell us, probably. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, go ahead. Um, Alia has had contact, technically, with the First Horizon directly to one of the ships, actually, right? And she was oh, that's literally, true, yeah. literally. Yeah, you, you connected with, with one of the the butterflies, yeah. Yeah, and so when she was connected to Tamir's mind, would she also have been able to pick up the fact that it is First um, Horizon related? There's um, you know how things have auras. Right, mm -hmm. you would understand that. Uh, there are, or there are mana. Uh, like to me, one of the entities in there probably does have some similarity. You wouldn't think it's the white butterfly necessarily. It's like right. a piece of the code matches, right? So you see a similar aura, or you you did maybe pick up on something that seemed familiar. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it is the first horizon or the white butterfly that's in his head, but is somehow connected. Right, basically something more ancient, something that's yes, not the <laughs> horizon. Um. Margo's pool. You know, I, I could try. Uh, we could put it on and, and, and see what it does. Oh, gosh. Is there any way we can run some tests before we actually... Um... I mean, it is an artifact. Okay. And then I, I think I, Ali looks at Tal. I... I mean, neither of you are an artificer, but if y'all wanted to maybe try to identify it, you could try a combined metacurgy. I mean, I'm sorry, a combined uh, mystic ability rule. One of you could bake it with a plus one from the other. Yeah, sure. I I feel like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like Tal, if you would like to do the honors. Oh, gosh. You could I, add a plus one for wait, wait. Alia's help. Yeah. A lot of limited success. Okay, so not a failure. That's good. So uh, the two of you kind of circle it. Maybe you hold hands and you try to feel this object. You are not artificers, meaning uh, they don't call out to you in the same way, but you do get the vibe from it that it is has a healing energy. It is meant as a healing object. Uh, the vibe you got from what Lamara said is that some people use it for things other than healing. Well, I mean, anything can be poison if you use right. Exactly, one. but but it but the the core of it is meant to be a. It is meant to be a healing object. Uh, the the vibe that you get from it comes off a uh, very clean and uh, uh, like full of light and positive. Uh, um, I would say with the limited success, um, you get the idea. And maybe it has to be Alia that puts words to it since you guys are kind of combined in this, that it is meant as an object that heals the mind and the spirit. Um, it has multiple functions and that it can copy, change, or even potentially erase things if set to that. It's not something that happens at random. It's like a it's a choice made. Um, and oftentimes with success, the helmet can be used to heal manas and mind means, uh, meaning uh uh, plagues of the mind. And Alia immediately starts like chuckling and kind of laughing in a sense. Just, I don't know where you all get all this luck, but <laughs> we might actually have exactly what we need here. But Archons, I, this, this may actually work. This, this item it's, itself, its entire purpose is meant to heal. We just need to figure out how. Well, the question is, is will it heal the mechanical issue? Or is it a software issue? I guess. It's kind of a little bit of both. It's like, it's like an organic thing that's up with his mind because his mind is fighting yeah. technology, but it is also a tech issue. So you don't really know. And I think at this point, Alia kind of chimes up and goes, well, what I can see, or perhaps the way we can approach this is, and she kind of points to the table and what she did. 
Tamir is in there with something else. Or what? And you mentioned like two other things actually, right? Is that something that she picked up? Yes, absolutely. Okay. There are a total of three entities in that body. One is the Tamir we know. Two, I couldn't quite identify. Oh, I can. I did my. I did my best to isolate Tamir and protect him from whatever struggle that is happening in his mind. So at least his personality is safe for now. Uh, one. He could perhaps. Uh, use... One of them is the. The. Tech, uh, and the other one is Sally. <clears throat> Sally. Yeah. So apart from being, uh, you know, uh, hiding uh, First Horizon tech in his head uh, and not telling anybody, Jackass has been plugging his head into the ship. So, you know. know, We're going to have to have a talk with him about all this. Captain, can I suggest, you know, some ships have swear jars. Maybe some ships should have a a Assad jar. And every time they do something (laughs) stupid, we can add... (laughs) Okay, just because you know. All right, I <laughs> I like this. Um, I'll even start paying you in order for you to start filling it up for me. Great, just put it right in the jar. So Lamar looks really excited. She goes, "Um, but we can, can I try." Okay, okay. This we, we are we are aiming to shut down the Sally side. Right? That's that's what we're... Or perhaps strengthening the Tamir side and giving him... Because the battle is with him. He's the one that is fighting it. We can perhaps strengthen him, giving more assistance. But he's... Well, the mind is too much of a, of a labyrinth for us outsiders to perhaps navigate with him. But he can. It's, 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 it's his mind. And perhaps we can what... use the few... I don't know what any of that means. Adults are talking. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, uh, my was, there, there was like, she goes, definitely like kind of like puts a finger up. One second. And perhaps we can give him the tools and the strength so that he can actually take his mind back and push out whatever there is that is trying to take hold. You just put your finger up at me? But it's software. You... His mind is the soul. I don't know whatever that means. There are, there's too much data in his head. He shut down like a computer, like, and he points to like the back of his head, like a computer. Like if you tried to put all of the systems up on the Defiant and the ship crashed, that's what happened. He like, he blue screened. Yeah. So we're we're trying to get the extra software out of his head but does the helmet remove like um delete sally from his um my understanding is it it helps his mind so if nothing else it may um try to restabilize him so that he's stronger in fighting whatever it is but it's not going to get rid of the technology All all right well it's worth a try and i guess I'll prepare to start going to the city of foreigners. Okay. Um, Lamar goes, I- I- I'll have this ready in five minutes. She looks very excited to get to use this. She says, I have seen so many people have these helmets put on. Never anything good comes of it. And she like shwoops it onto Not this. Helping. Um, and you watch as these like black spikes, right? That are kind of cool to the touch, reach out and almost engulf his head. Um, as the helmet kind of slides on and you watch as Lamar kind of touches some things on the outside, these glyphs, and it, the whole thing kind of activates. You see the glyphs from underneath have a backlight glow and they're, uh, you can see them uh, a lot more. She is going to make a Medicurgy check at a plus two because that's how this item works. Um, wait, okay, hang Don, on. I'm trained in Medicurgy. Can I give her an assistance? Yeah, absolutely. That'll be another plus one. So that would be three. And also, I was curious, is there a way to have, like, because I'm assuming that we would need to guide this to the portion of the brain or to the section where Tamir specifically is? Nope, that's that's the helmet's job. It's basically okay. a turn it on and let it work. It's kind of like sitting under the hair salon dryer. You just got to let it do its thing, right? Uh- <laughs> so she did get a success, and that is all you need. 
um, as it begins to work. I do need to roll. I'm just, I'm just imagining Luca in, in one of those things and just talking to old ladies next to him. Just. Uh. She goes, I, um, well, it, it looks like it's successful. You can see it. Like the lights are like, woo, woo. Uh, now we just have to wait. Um, for hopefully Tamir to return. I, I, I don't know how long it'll take. Sometimes it's hours. Sometimes it's days. I th- I ter- oh. uh, Alia then turns to Tal and he goes, she goes, I, I tried to see if I could contact him earlier, but maybe once he's stabilized, maybe since you have a stronger connection, you could try to see if you can reach him. Maybe perhaps even guide him or let him know about the scenario. You know, encourage him to do, to, to continue fighting. That's about all we can do. But he's stable. Um, and she kind of looks. She says, he seems okay. And uh, it kind of leaves you with that sound of like, woo, 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 of the whirling as it begins to try to heal to mirror. We catch Tao in the cockpit, uh, in the bridge. Uh, you are going to fly everyone to uh, the city of Foreigner. This is going to be not a difficult piloting check, uh, but you may be noticed. So what I'm going to do first is have you roll the piloting. You're going to get your plus one for the blessed ship and the plus one for the chapel on board. I also have the uh, maneuverability at plus two because of the antimatter robots. Correct. Yep. Yep. Yes, it, it will. Because you're going to basically take flight from the planet. Excuse, bless me. Bless you. All right. Oh, two. Right. Um, it's a little bumpy getting out of atmosphere. Uh, good thing everything's kind of strapped down. Uh, there's no extended flight, though it is going to take you. You basically have to go to another moon uh, in this system. So you're going to look at a few hours travel. Tricky thing is you're traveling through what is supposed to be dead right now. There's like a, a standoff in the skies uh, around everything. So um, I need a check to see if you're noticed. Um, I'm going to say, do y'all have stealth on this vessel? We do. Okay. I thought you did. Yeah. Because uh, we may have to is... make a, you get a plus two for your stealth or a plus one. It's stealth reduced technology. signature by one. Reduces your signature by one. Well, there's there's stealth technology on here, and then there's also ship technology. Reduces okay, so here we go. So the da- right one. now, the ship is at a signature one, which means once your stealth technology is activated, which I imagine you do, it will negate that, which means you travel pretty much under the radar, though you have to go slow. And so it will be a few hours travel as you make your way to another moon. This moon is on um, the far side of Zalos, uh, the sun. And is always in the sun. It is a it is a, a lit moon. It shows in the sky of the planet at all points. Um, and as you come in to the city of foreigners, you can see that it is uh, busy. There are a lot of ships here, both some from the order, some probably uh, circling the area uh, from the homogeny, uh, right? This like the ships that are standing standing off. Um, And Tao manages kind of to land you. Nobody even questions you coming in in terms of like checking you. It seems that the checkpoint is going to be entering the city, which is behind a massive set of walls. People are trying to get in, refugees. You see much of the same uh, as the last place you left, except these people are beaten and bruised, trying to find safe haven, not leave it. And uh, there's a, a long line basically to get in. As you all land, with our, cor- our single corruption bar for the day being used, a series of bombs begin to go off in the city. Suicide bombers have, um, homogeny bombers have uh, opened up uh, active warfare. Uh, a few explosions go off in the distance. People scream uh, as maybe you're standing on the gangway watching this happen. Uh, some people cover their ears. The guards in this area, the 
pariah guards uh, take up gunpoint and begin looking around for anyone and everyone. Smoke begins to billow out and covers uh, along with dust and debris. And next week, we will uh, we'll return right here at this very spot. Son of a bitch. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, not next week. Uh, we're half of us are going to pack. Right. Uh, the week after that. Uh, the, 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 the 14th? 15th? One of those days. Um, the 16th. Uh, holy shit. That was a, that was a fucking episode. Um, we're going to get out of here. Um, we will see you next week. Not next week, two weeks from now for more shenanigans and figure out what the fuck yeah. has happened. Uh, and so, if you're going to be at PAX, you know, come see us. Yeah. Come see us. Dot and KP and I will be there. Come say hi. Uh, <sighs> wow. Um, yeah. So let's go around, do our introductions, uh, and get the hell out of here. Uh, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Gnome. Really? Wow. Yeah, go follow Gnome. Uh, Aris, who are you? Where can we find you? What are you up to? Hi, I'm Aris Savan. <laughs> I, uh, as, as Gnome went over, I, I talk shit with him and hang out <laughs> on his channel most Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We won't be uh, brewing tomorrow just because it's just too much. Um, but uh, we'll be back on Monday, I think, if not next Wednesday. It's fine. Um, I make things. You can find things that I make at erisavad.com. Um, if you want an ass hat, yes, go get your ass hat. You too can have a wonderful ass hat. Look how bold and beautiful that yeah. ass hat is. Anyway, mm, so much ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's just you gotta love it you gotta lean into it uh, lean into it now's the perfect time there's ass. nothing better than giving your your uh loved ones an ass hat for them yeah. yes uh i also have a little little stocking stuffer ornaments and stuffer stocking ornaments They're where so you can cute. Set, you can put a whole set of dice in them or other little trinket or whatever and hang it up it'd be really cute for little gift cards yeah. little gift card stockings for the tree very cute love it yeah anyways that's me perfect uh kp same questions who are you where can we find you what are you up to hi uh hey everyone i'm kp i go by kp Love studios on twitch twitter instagram i do photography i do cosplay and portrait photos as well as get to play games with amazing people like these folks here uh, I'm, as you can see, in this wonderful game on Thursdays. Uh, on top of that, every Tuesdays, I'm also again on the Anime Game Channel with Eris and our, you know, quite talkative uh, member here, Gnome. Never shuts uh, up. As, uh, on, on, he just never shuts up, man. It's just the entire episode today. It's just kind of, and he's damn, right. it's so distracting. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, we, 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 I, we get to play a game of Tales from the Loop. Uh, it's, a, it's so fun. We've just finished episode three. So not a lot to, you know, you're not, you, you got plenty of time to catch up, you know, a few episodes and you'll be there next week on Tuesday or not next week. Following? Are we going no, to Where is Tuesday? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Tuesday is fine. So yes. So come check us out on Tuesday. We're going to, it's going to be great. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I was also tomorrow I get to be with Dot on uh, uh, Academic Foxhole's channel playing a game of City of Light and Shadow, which is a fate-based game where we kick Nazi butt, uh, where a bunch Woo! of resistance fighters. Yeah, and uh, we go around 1940 France, uh, beating the shit out of Nazis. I mean, I mean, come on. I don't know how else I can sell that. What more could you uh, ask for? And <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to catch anything else that I'm up to, um, I'm on Twitter. That's where I kind of mostly post my stuff, or on my Patreon. Uh, KB11 Studios there. Do check that out. Uh, your support means a lot. It's just three bucks and. Yeah, that's it. Hell freaking yeah. Uh, Dot, last but not least, who are you? Where can we find you? What are you up to? Hi, friends. I'm Little Red Dot. You can find me most of the time over at Cobalt Press, where I run the Twitch channel. The rest of the time, uh, you can catch me here and uh, for my podcast, uh, Stitch of Fate, which uh, we're making a big announcement in on the 14th for our first live stream on our Twitch channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be expanding into a World of Darkness network. So Pod by Night is expanding. Uh, so come check that out. It's cool. If you like, if you like Dark Tales, oh boy, <laughs> uh, have we got news for you? Um, yeah, that's I'm running all kinds of things all over the place. But more importantly, uh, you can catch me over at PAX. So if you're there, make sure to drop by the Cobalt Press booth. Come say hi. 
Um, and if you're going to be home and unable to make it, uh, I will be running a few panels uh, that are going to be streamed to the PaxU Twitch channel. So check those out. One, I'll be moderating three. One on Freelancing Tabletop 101. So if you want to know how to get into the biz, KP is going to be sitting on that one. Uh, we'll be doing a TikTok and Instagram for RPGs and a world building for TTRPGs um, with some of the best names in the industry. So I'm pretty pretty stoked about it. Hell freaking yes. Uh, yeah, so come uh, check us out next weekend at, uh, at PAX, uh, and we will see you guys in uh, two weeks uh, for more of this shenanigans show. And as always, if you guys like what we do here and you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is Patreon. Link for that down below. While you're down there, join us in the Discord. Be a part of the community. Be a part of the conversation. But for now, we will see you in a few weeks. So from all of us to you guys, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.